Hey everyone, welcome back to a Thursday Tips and Tricks. As promised, I'm going to talk to you today about mitering border corners. And as you recall, last week we were talking about border prints and adding them and dealing with the corners. Learning how to miter is really a nice way to finish off the corners when you're dealing with border prints, but realize Mitering doesn't require you to have a border print. You can do mitered corners with plain fabrics the same as you do it with the border prints that I'm going to show you today. Um, and I'm going to share with you the um, way that I like to do the miter, but no matter whose process you're following, there are three things that you're going to have to do very well in order to have successful mitered corners. One, you're going to have to make sure that your strips are long enough. And we're going to talk about that in just one minute. Two, you have to make sure to stop and start at a quarter of an inch point. Uh, and we'll talk about that in a minute. And three, you have to make sure that you're stitching with a good 45 degree angle through those borders in order for your borders to lay flat. So let's address these one at a time. First of all, when it comes to the length of your border strips, how do you figure that out? Well, you have to do a little bit of math there. And it has to do, it's gonna change for every one of your projects, but the math is gonna stay the same. You have to add up the numbers. You have to add up, this is a little project, it already had one border on it, but I'm gonna go ahead and just miter it with these, with the border print here. So you have to measure the edge of your, from edge to edge of your quilt interior. And then you have to know the, so, the width of the border strip that you're adding, and you have to add those numbers up. So when I measured the interior of this little project here, it happened to be 23 inches. These border strips were cut at three inches. So I'm taking the, the interior measurement, 23 inches, three inches for this border width, three inches for that border width, and I'm adding two inches for good measure. That two inch mark, I would never go less than that when I'm making a miter because that's my margin of error, just in case I do a little bit of math the wrong way. Now this project happens to be square, so I only have to do that computation once. If it was a rectangular project, I'd have to figure out the length for the short edges and the long edges by doing that math for those two different edges of the project. All right, after I've got my borders cut to length, before I start to put them on, the first thing that I'm gonna do is come to the corner of the interior part of my quilt, and I'm gonna mark an X where my quarter of an inch seams are going to be. That's my quarter of an inch stop start point. Every time I do stitching on these borders, I have to make sure that I stop at that point and I don't run further toward the edge of the quilt. And it's beneficial to put a back tack at the beginning and at the end of that line of stitching so, because, so that those are secure right there at that point. Now, positioning your strips on your project what you're going to want to do is match the centers. And on a little project like this, it's really simple. I have a seam coming right out here, so I pretty much know where the center of the interior is. For my border strip, I simply folded that in half, and that's going to give me that halfway mark, and I line up that fold with that seam. Again, I've got wiggle room there, so it doesn't have to be super precise, but then I would pull my border strip out and proceed to pin it together. And this one is already pinned, and you can see that here. I'm going to, because this is a border print, I'm going to want to sew with the border on top. Sometimes when I have that marked seam, it's actually easier to sew with the, with the interior of the quilt on top because it's easier for me to see the start and stop point. But if I can't, which I don't want to do with this because I want to make sure that when I'm adding my stitching, I'm adding it right at the edge of that red li printed line on the border print. What I'm going to do is mark my start stop points um, on both of those edges on the border print itself. First border that I put on is easy to do that. When I go to add subsequent borders, you're gonna see that I'm gonna have this excess fabric that I need for the mitered edge hanging there, and it's kind of in the way. So one of the things that I do before I do the stitching on subsequent borders is I take that 
first border print that's already been sewn and I'm gonna fold it out of the way. And sometimes I'll just fold it twice just so I'm getting it far out of the way of the future line of stitching. Then I can put this border back down and come back with a pin and pin it right there. I can double check to see if I'm where I need to be. And that's gonna be my start stop point. And I'll proceed to stitch those borders into place. And again, because it's a border print, I'm gonna stitch right at the edge of that red printed line. Now that's what I've done on these two borders. These are already sewn together. This is where the mitering comes into play. To be able to set it up for the 45 degree seam that needs to come out toward the edges, I'm gonna flip the project over and I'm gonna work with the wrong side of the project on top. And what I'm going to do is I'm gonna take the raw edge of the quilt interior, those two edges, and I'm gonna fold them so that they're together. So I'm kind of folding that quilt diagonally. It's gonna take a minute for me to, to shuffle these kind of down into place. But once I do that, essentially what I'm trying to do is I'm trying to layer my two sewn border strips right sides together. There's gonna to be a part of the quilt or there's gonna be the quilt in between, but I'm taking time to line up the raw edges there. I'm gonna take time to line up the raw edges here and the raw edges here. And then I can see and focus on my stop start point. And it's from this point that I need to draw a stitching line out at 45 degrees. Not this way. If I draw a line this way, I'll end up with a box corner and that's not what you want. So my favorite tool is the OmniGrid 96. It's a 45 degree angled tool, but I like it because it's got lots of horizontal and vertical lines that I can use one line along my seam and another line down here along the edge of the border print. But what I'm going to do is come right to the stop start point line that up, I'm gonna take a minute to do that and get it on, and do a marked line from the stop start point right down to the edge of the border print. And once I have that marked, I'm gonna to wanna to make sure that these things stay together. So I'm gonna add a couple of pins around it, move this over to my sewing machine. Now this might be a little challenging for you to see, but essentially what I'm going to do is start and stop right at my start point, and I'm gonna stitch right on the line that I marked all the way out to the edge of the border piece. Usually, because this is a border and I don't intend to add any more, what I'm going to do is back tack at the beginning and back tack at the end. So one or two stitches forward, then one or two stitches backwards, and then right on the marked line. And when I get to the end, I'm gonna do the same thing. I do not want this coming apart on me as I'm working forward and putting the project together. Now, you will be trimming this excess away, but you don't wanna do it yet. I never make a cut. Even though I've done hundreds of mitered, hundreds of mitered corners, I still don't trust myself. I always wanna make sure that I take the project and I open it up to see, oh, how well did I do? That looks pretty impressive. Now that I'm satisfied that I don't, I have a nice flat corner there, then I'll fold this back, trim away my excess edges. I usually tend to press that seam open, but I would repeat those same steps on all four corners to end up with that beautiful mitered corner right out to the edge. And this is where my little bit of extra came in, just in case I mismeasured something along the way. So there you have it. That's how you do a simple mitered border. And um, what I'd like to do next week is take you one step further. This was just a single mitered border. What I'd like to do next week is talk to you about adding border strips that are made with multiple different um, fabrics. So come back and check us out next week for how to do this and give these mitered borders a try. If you've never tried them, you might find that uh, it might be just the right thing for your next special quilt project. You guys have a great week and I'll see you next Thursday.